I decided, what am I going to do? Forte gave me this place to start the BA Law, influenced, of course, by a beautiful program in the Springbok Radio. It was called Consider Your Verdict. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be a lawyer, a human rights lawyer. And my, pet, my dad said, you're not going to make it. It's no place for the truth. I said, what? He said, no. I want to study law. He said, you're not going to make it. It's not a place for the truth. And I thought my dad is, you know, he hasn't got education. He doesn't know what he's talking about. It was then, then a friend of mine said to me, hey, we're doing this play uh, in the Bird Street in Port Elizabeth. We need some people, because I was acting at school, see, with Winston Chawner in at Newell High School. And I went to see this group called the Serpent Players. I walked past the door. There was a poor white guy with a brown jersey with the elbows out, smoking a pipe. I thought he was the caretaker of the building. And I walked in. And we sat down. I knew the elders in the groups, Norman Chinga, all of them sitting down there. And this white man walked in with a brown beard and first introduced me to this white man. And first says, John, this is Athol. Athol, this is John. That was the first time in my life that I was introduced to a white person on a first name basis. It was not John, this is Mr. Fugat. Mr. Fugat, this is John. It was John, this is Arthur. Arthur, this is John. And I knew, oh yeah, here we go. This white man's gonna work with us and he's gonna write an anthology. I know black people, I worked with them, I lived with them, and then he becomes very rich with our culture, our money, and that's fine. So for the first three years, I didn't eat at Arthur's place, I didn't have anything to do with him except the work, and I, hated white people with a beautiful passion. <laughs> I felt good when I touched that part. I felt good. Now, within the process of this work, of this Greek play called Antigone, came a moment in the play where the question was asked, if the law of the state is unjust, is it right to disobey that law? That was Antigone's challenge was King Creon had decreed that the two brothers who died, one brother died fighting for the state, must have a very beautiful, noble funeral with all the trappings. The other brother who was attacking the state, his body must be left to die, to rot in public food for the jackals and the green fly. So Antigone broke that law. That clicked in me immediately, that this thing is right, that where I am, that you could use the art you could use the power of the word in, to deal with your situation, even to attempt to bring the truth to power, to bring art to the people. That's why I did not regret missing that trip to leave the country. But then, of course, the following year, I met another white person, Barney Simon, mm -hmm. who was one of the founders of the... Uh, of the market theater. He was a Jewish, very naughty guy, very mischievous. I never knew when he was serious. Then I stepped back and I said to my friend Winston, this is becoming a problem. We're knowing a lot of white people. What's gonna happen when the revolution comes? What's gonna happen when the revolution comes? We're gonna be careful now. I can't kill this white dude because he could be Arthur's friend or Arthur's cousin. And I said, it's too much for me. And that's when things began really in my career as an actor, began basically I wanted to be mentored to write. I wanted to tell stories. My grandfather had three wives and could not spell polygamy. It was just grandma one, grandma two, grandma three. <laughs> and I had to visit all these grandmas without interfering with grandpa's schedule. I understood his schedule clearly, that Monday to Tuesday is with grandma one. And grandma one taught us about culture, about who we are, about that we were descendants of great kingdoms, even made me believe that Long Umchaja was actually the real king of the Abatembu tribe. Tribe is the word that we can't find in the indigenous languages. This is the inability of the white men to understand the family could be 10,000 people. It's a clan. And of course, Grandma too was school and religion. <laughs> Oh, she made sure we went to school and we studied and we went to church. So one time I asked my father, 
what is this church thing about? Because you're a very traditional person. We slaughter ox. We do this for Abantuana, Imbelego, and all those things. My father says, no, when I die, I'm going to be an ancestor. I said, but why will you go to church? Just in case. Insurance. <laughs> Insurance. See, so Grandma 3 was the beautician. She had a blue line right in the center here. She always made herself look the prettiest. And she was very young, but she spoke about women, respect, gender issues, important issues, and that to understand that it was not just our duty, because that's confusing, a responsibility to look after the weaker within our communities. And if the weaker by physical endowment, which was a freak of nature, women are weaker, doesn't make them weaker in any other level except masculines. But that was understanding the equality of all those created by Kamata, which we just called the creator, replaced by some people with a big book called God and Jesus and all those Jewish ancestors. But we, we took it in. So that's generally to get me to where we are in the 70s when we started writing plays. 